Hello, I'm Artifact Samards, and I'm calling out paleontologist Jack Horner, who's watching this TED Talk, Building a Dinosaur from a Chicken, and I was appalled at some of the things he was saying, but I was also sitting there laughing so hard that I nearly rolled out of my seat. Now, the part that got my goat, though, was when I started comparing dinosaur tails to those of birds. And I think I'm also going to mention that some of the genetic engineering is talking about scares the living tar out of me. It's transgenics and that type of thing. Very dangerous. But we're going to deal with the tails mainly here that he was talking about. So, dinosaur tails, and he's comparing them to those of birds, and calling birds dinosaurs. And deal mostly with tails. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Horner. Uh, tails of different creatures, even among mammals, are used for different purposes. They're designed, I said designed, for different purposes. And I'm an agnostic. I can easily see that these things were designed. So here we go. I'm going to start with the king of Protista. Protista means little things, little ones. Um, with their flagellum. Now, a flagellum is essentially a little hair like structure that propels these micros microscopic beasties through water. And. It's really not a tail in the sense of animals, but we'll go with it anyway. So here we have propulsion. These microscopic beasts that have this are basically designed to move around with these uh, flagella. Basically swim through water. Human sperm are equipped with these. So that's one purpose. Even though it's not technically a tail. So I would start with that, and now we're going to move very quickly to other creatures. Okay, uh, next thing is uh, flatworms and such very small critters. Uh, their tails serve a different purpose, like I said. Their tails, a lot of these small critters like this, you cut the tail off, a new head grows on, and a new tail grows on the head section. So the tail actually helps with asexual reproduction if the uh, thing is cut in half. So that's another purpose of a tail. And it didn't come from any dinosaur, Mr. Horner. And I'm going to move along and start looking at animals. We'll finish up with birds, and we'll get to the birds. Now I'm going to look at the crocodilians, which uh, science claims have been around for millions and millions of years. I don't have any problem with that. Their tails probably have more to do with balance than anything else. You can watch one of these things moving around. Uh, you see how it kind of sways side by side. I'm thinking without their tails, they couldn't really do that much. So, crocodilians, they use them for basically balance and that type of thing. Unlike the previous examples. Okay, so we're going to move along to salamanders. What's special about them? Well, their tails are probably used to an extent for balance, too. But these small uh, lizards, basically, a lot of them, if you cut off the tail, it regrows. So, one major function of its tail, which you can't really compare to the others, is a Perhaps 
it's designed, well, like I said, designed, uh, basically to be eaten to spare the main creature. It'll regrow. We don't have the ability to do that ourselves, regrow a limb. We weren't designed to do this. This is just one example. Marveled sa Salamander has millions of these. Now we're going to move along, Mr. Horner, to another beastie. Here, Mr. Horner, we have our uh, uh, slimy little friends called frogs and toads, amphibians. What do they use their tail for? Well, their tails are used, obviously, for propulsion. Much the same way a fish, a fish's tail is used. Only the tail is absorbed as they go through metamorphosis, changing from a polylog into a frog. We all know this. So again, we have a tail that's used for propulsion, but becomes useless when they move on to land or whatever. So, there we have another use. It's used until it's not needed. Mr. Horner. Now, here's a much larger creature and one of the strangest ones on the face of the planet, Duckbill Platypus. Its tail is used mainly for propulsion, I would think, in the water. Uh, this creature, of course, is technically classified as a mammal, even though it lays eggs like a chicken. You think this actually could have evolved from something? I don't think so. It's technically a mammal, like I said, but it's one of the most bizarre ones on the face of the planet. Rifled, perhaps, by the uh, naked mole rat. Yeah, I know a lot of critters, Mr. Horner. And who doesn't love the kangaroo? I think everybody does. Except maybe some Australians are fed up with them in their backyards, but... Kangaroo uses its tail, again, for balance. See, it all varies between the critter. With the critter. And what it uses it for. Its tail is designed for balance. Lifts its tail up and it's pretty much helpless, from what I understand. Do you think dinosaurs use their tails for balance? I don't think so, Mr. Horner. Uh, this critter did not evolve from a dinosaur. I want you to know, I gotta state for the record, I am an agnostic. I can easily see that nature is was designed, that I'll concede. I have no choice. I look at different creatures and plants, and I know that they could not have come into being accidentally, as you people are claiming. Now we have our fine furry friends, uh, who we all know as cats. Americans love them, they keep them by the billions or whatever. And their tails are used for a slightly different purpose. You ever seen a cat looking at a bird out the window, for instance? You'll see that tail going, moving around, swishing. It's designed basically to show anger and possibly even to communicate to all the cats that there's prey nearby. So there's another purpose for cat for tails that you, Mr. Horner, have paid no attention to. Oh, I do pay attention. Just saying. Then we have Lassie. Lassie's tail, well, it can show the dog is happy. Uh, I think that's basically what its purpose is. It kind of helps cover its rear end. That type of thing. So here we have another purpose, purpose for a tail among mammals. We've seen uh, balance with the kangaroo, 
anger and emotion with cat, and again, emotions with dogs, and it probably helps cover them a little bit. We all know dogs will tuck their tail in when they're frightened and they're running. Okay, here we have a frequent ingredient in chili, and the rattlesnake has a slightly different purpose again for its tail. Of course, the whole thing is basically a tail, but uh, rattlesnake is well known for producing a sound either before or after it strikes. You, Mr. Horner, I failed to recognize this, that this is completely unlike anything a dinosaur would do. You're claiming that we're all descended from dinosaurs and that type of thing is absurd. Anybody who uses their brain to realize this, but people aren't used to using that appendage anymore. Okay. And now, Mr. Horner, we're going to get to tales of birds. There are obviously millions of different species. Colonel, parrot, owls, whatever. What do they use their tails for? Well, tails of birds, Mr. Horner, are not the same thing as the tails of dinosaurs. The tails of birds, Mr. Horner, are used for one thing. They're used basically as rudders in uh, flight. You see, without their tails, birds won't be able to fly very well. And we can say the th same thing for flying insects, especially moths and butterflies. They have tails, again, mostly for stability. It has nothing to do with some varmint who was running who was running around, you know, eighty million years ago on the plan, stomping around, munching uh, trees or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. But you, Mr. Horner, in your presentation, compared dinosaur tails to birds, and you compared. Dinosaurs to birds, and that is what irks me. You see, Mr. Horner, my conclusion is that all these different creatures are designed, and I don't know by who or what, with different characteristics and different purposes for their main appendage. I have a playlist, Mr. Horner, called Intelligent Design in Nature, in which I talk about different characteristics of things, and those characteristics basically show that there is purpose and reason for uh, things. No, no, Mr. Horner, we did not come into existence by accident. We are not here as a result of uh, some primordial soup being zapped by lightning. Anybody who believes that, I just feel sorry for him. Yes, there is purpose in nature. There is design in nature. And you, Mr. Horner, are part of the club, so to speak. And that's the way it is. You're a unable to look beyond anything that you're uh, taught to regurgitate. Like, if I'm not mistaken, this is a parrot, looks like it. You, Mr. Horner, are a parrot. You just parrot what you're told to say rather than using your brain, and I think that's a damn shame. I got a little longer than I wanted to, so... There you go, Mr. Horner. You want to respond, you know where to find me. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thank you for watching. I approve this message.